Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about envisioning the, the future role of technology for older adults is Denise Calhoun and Sung Lee. As a National Board Certified Teacher, Denise developed a language arts curriculum for older adults titled Changing Seasons, a language arts curriculum for healthy aging. Dr. Calhoun is the CEO of Communicare Connections, a company dedicated to helping older adults maintain quality of life. Dr. Sung Lee is an assistant professor of education at Pepperdine University in the Graduate School of Education and Psychology. Dr. Calhoun and Dr. Sun, or Dr. Lee are currently in the process of launching a nonprofit organization, Communicare, which strives to provide opportunities for lifelong learning and meaningful social interaction across generations using innovative technologies. Good morning, Dr. Calhoun and Dr. Lee. How are you doing? Great. Thank you, Jason. We are very excited to be here and appreciate the opportunity to discuss the future role of technology for older adults. Before we begin, we would like to share this quote by Bill Morris, a technology entrepreneur who worked for Amazon. And it goes like this. As life expectancy extends beyond 80 years in some parts of the world, more people are struggling with brain diseases. For older people, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other conditions become a major impediment to quality of life. As you can see in this figure, currently there are 6,200,000 Americans, 65 and older, over living with Alzheimer's disease. And by the year 2060, it is projected that the number will increase to 13,800,000 older adults living with Alzheimer's. As a major concern for the future well being of older adults, we have been looking into technology as a possible alternative intervention to address the problem. To this end, our focus today is on implications of technology usage for older adults, which includes discussing the effects of social isolation and loneliness, the benefits and challenges of technology, findings from research and how it has influenced the development of our nonprofit organization, Communicare, and the future role of technology for older adults, suggesting technology uses as a possible means to help older adults expand their social network and to provide opportunities for lifelong learning. So, it is no surprise that older adults have been less receptive to using computers than younger adults. Due to lack of trust, they are typically apprehensive about participating in activities on the internet. In this figure, from a study by Olson, you can see that in comparison to younger adults, out of 195 older adults, 32% reported never to go online, 44% sometimes went online, and 24% often used the internet. Now, the second figure illustrates a comparison of device usage between younger and older adults. The study consisted of nine devices, such as keyboards, mice, joysticks, and speech recognition apps. Now, taken as an average, the findings indicated that 56% of older adults never use these devices, 23% sometimes used them, and 21 often used these types of devices. A unique feature of this study was that it, off, it offered more than just yes and no insights in respect to technology. So even though they may have used technology, it doesn't necessarily mean that they fully understood it. The study also found that older adults were most familiar with devices like keyboards and mice and functions like clicking, scrolling, and opening and closing windows. Internet usage in the study was limited to communication and searching for information pertaining to community events, health, news, and travel. Surprisingly, however, 
they did not use the internet as frequently for things like banking, education, and shopping. Since the advent of the coronavirus, however, usage of the internet has changed tremendously. Now, the latest events that have occurred due to the coronavirus have caused even further concern for the well being of older adults. It has, in fact, brought more awareness to the severity of social isolation as well as loneliness. Casualties have not only been reported in the US, but all over the world. If you look at the numbers in this graph, you can see how very disheartening they are. Many of those who died, however, were not affected directly from COVID, but indirectly due to social isolation, causing physical as well as mental decline, leading to loneliness and depression. Loneliness is a set of feelings resulting from the absence of intimate and social needs. These um, emotions, as many of you are aware, were magnified when older adults experienced social isolation during the height of the pandemic, which gradually resulted in reduced quality of life. It affected their mental health, causing cognitive decline, as well as increased reports of depression, resulting in physical decline as well. Many either lost the desire or were unable to communicate effectively, which is exactly what I personally experienced with my uncle, who within three months of the coronavirus restrictions died weighing only 103 pounds. And mind you, he did not have COVID-19. Because there was limited access to care homes, his daughters were not allowed to visit and could only see him from time to time through a glass window, which I am sure most of you probably already know was the norm for many. To help alleviate loneliness, it is stories like these that bring awareness to the importance of incorporating technology into the daily lives of older adults. With this thought in mind, we created a model or framework which integrates theory into learning technology to reinforce best practices for teaching the skill. The theoretical framework is grounded on the principle of fusing theory into mastering digital technology to increase social engagement as well as interaction among older adults. Besides examining factors of, in neuroscience, social learning theories as well as adult learning theories were explored in the process of improving communicative interaction and social engagement via technology. So have you ever heard of the term use it or lose it? Well, this is a reality and it happened to my mom. Once she was confined to the bed, she was not motivated to even attempt to walk and eventually lost total mobility and couldn't walk because her bones had contracted. Well, the same is true with the brain. If you don't do things to challenge your mind, your thinking ability will eventually fade away. There are two kinds of memory, episodic and procedural. Episodic memories are recollections of events, times, and places associated with feelings and emotions. Procedural memories are part of our long-term memory that helps us to perform tasks like riding a bike, driving a car, or just simply walking. Episodic memories usually decline faster than procedural memories. To maintain our short-term memory, Studies have shown that engagement in challenging activities and enriching environments are necessary. So a major benefit of technology in this case would, uh, is the fact that it challenges our brain, which could help keep us more aware longer. Often, other benefits include internet access, 
making and booking travel plans. It also facilitates banking and shopping, especially for those who are not mobile or do not have transportation. Moreover, with shopping, it exposes individuals to a wide range of products. Other benefits include email communication and healthcare info. But most importantly, it provides opportunities for social networking, which helps to keep older adults connected to society. Barriers to consider include physical limitations, such as mobility in using fingers, poor eyesight, as well as hearing loss. Other challenges include accessibility and support. Many cannot afford a computer or the monthly fee for internet usage. And because technology is second nature for many of the younger generations, they sometimes do not have the patience to explain the basics or understand why it is so difficult for older adults to navigate technology. In this sense, a lack of support tends to become more evident. There's also the fear factor. Many older adults display a lack of trust in technology and lack confidence in using computers. As an older adult myself, I can totally relate. When I am in line at a store and I whip out my checkbook, I begin to cringe because I can just feel and see in the eyes of those behind me thinking, OMG, no, she didn't. This is gonna take forever. Or when I'm at a versatile machine, I'm constantly looking behind me thinking, and making sure that no one is trying to hack into my account. Bottom line, this is strange territory for many of us, which causes anxiety due to the fear of making drastic mistakes, which is exactly what I experienced today when I was given the task of joining Jason's webinar. <laughs> so after seven years of research on improving Communitive interaction and cognitive functioning in older adults. Here are a few major findings related to technology that I would like to share with you. Number one, higher levels of computer usage is significantly associated with greater cognitive capability in older adults. This illustrates the point that technology usage stimulates the brain. Number two, social engagement is associated with increased cognitive functioning. Considering this finding, technology usage could be a means to facilitate social connections. It has been proven that there is a positive correlation between computer usage and years of education. This finding supports the notion that education and training facilitates computer usage for older adults. And finally, physical, psychological, and social challenges hamper computer usage. With new technologies, however, these barriers can be reduced to allow for more physical accessibility to computer usage. So based on the findings from studies I have conducted using data from the Health and Retirement Study, or HRS, as well as systematic reviews, we wanted to create a practical means to support older adults in addressing these areas. So with a lot of thought and collaboration, it led to the development of our nonprofit organization Communicare. To give you an idea of what it is about, Sun will discuss some of the key components of Communicare. All right. Thank you so much, Denise. And I'm very happy to be here to be able to share with you some of the plans that we have we are envisioning 
for Communicare. And as Denise mentioned, Communicare is a nonprofit organization that uh, is striving to advance the quality of life and sense of purpose for older adults. And we're trying to do this by providing opportunities for lifelong learning and meaningful social interaction across generation. And to do this through the use of innovative technologies. So I want to share with you um, the four program areas that we are envisioning. So the first area is to support lifelong creativity. The second area is to leverage technology for communication. And thirdly, um, we want to support intergenerational learning. And last but not least, to be able to carry out research and adv advocacy to help enhance the quality of life for older adults. So I'm going to go through each of these areas in more depth here. So the first area is lifelong creativity. And what we're trying to do is that we're trying to maintain and enhance the social and cognitive skills um, by allowing older adults to engage more fully in creative activities. And to this end, we want to develop targeted curricula and resources to meet the specific needs of older adults. The second area is technology for communication. And we want to be able to harness the power that lies within technology to help us help older adults connect and communicate and to be able to engage in meaningful everyday communication with their friends, with their family members and others. And in order for us to be able to help older adults utilize technology for these purposes, we want to develop trainings and we also want to provide uh, technical assistance to older adults, family members, as well as staff at residential facilities. The third area is in supporting intergenerational learning. We feel that it's important to create opportunities for older adults to interact and collaborate, not only among older adults themselves, but, but with individuals across generations. And by creating, by establishing learning communities, we hope to invite adults to be able to participate in educational activities, not only just as learners, but also as facilitators and mentors, and to be able to leverage the diverse, the variety of skills, knowledge, and experiences that they have gained through the, the course of their lives. And, and so that is um, the, that will be the focus of our third area of intergenerational learning. And our last area is in research and, and advocacy is that Communicare, we, we want to be able to conduct rigorous and evidence-based research and analyses on issues related to the social and psychological well-being of older adults. And we hope to spur dialogue and discussion through publications and, and open events that everyone will be invited to participate. Um, so that is a summary and an overview of the plans that we have, that we in, the work that we intend to do through Communicare and now I'm gonna pass it back to Denise uh, for the conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Sun. So in closing, I would like to end with this quote by Walter Luther, an American leader of organized labor and civil rights activist. And he says, there is no greater calling than to serve your fellow man. There is no greater contribution than to help the weak. There is no greater satisfaction than to have done it well. To do it well, government agencies need to provide community services 
and programs to empower older adults to age in place like technology training. With training, technology usage could be a means for older adults to connect to family and friends. And finally, it is confirmed through literature and studies that technology enhances plasticity and cognitive reserve. But most importantly, technology has the potential to help older adults to age in place through reinforcing independence and self-efficacy. To this end, the future role of technology for older adults is to help them to remain connected to society and hopefully through intergenerational connections, maybe one day society will change their mind, mindset on ageism. Thank you very much and we appreciate you listening. Here are our references. And if you would like to contact us, here is our information as well as some of the resources that we have developed. Our emails are as follows, denise.calhoun at pepperdine.edu. That is D-E-N-I-S-E -E dot B-A-L-H-O-U-N at P-E-P-P-E-R-D-I-N-E -P -P -E -E dot E-D-U and Sun Lee at pepperdine.edu and his name is spelled S-E-U-N-G dot L-E-E -E at pepperdine, P-E-P-P-E-R-D-I-N-E -E dot E-D-U. We both have LinkedIn accounts and uh, you could just look it up with our name. Make sure if you look up Sun's name that you include his initial B. And the link to the book that I authored is bit.ly slash changing seasons. That's B I T dot L Y slash C H A N G I N G dash S E A S O N S. And the title is Changing Seasons, a Language Arts Curriculum for Healthy Aging. It is a creative language-based program for caregivers and activity directors. Other resources include Rethinking the Education Potential of Older Adults to Delay the Onset of Dementia, which is in the Journal of Adult and Continuing Education. And our, our article that we wrote together is Computer Usage and Cognitive Capability of Older Adults. And it is in the journal Educational Gerontology. Again, we would like to thank you for attending our discussion on the future role of technology for older adults. First question, um, you had mentioned earlier that using technology challenges the brain. Can you give some examples of how technology usage stimulates brain health? Yes, sure. So first of all, I would like to make note that technology has a significant impact, both negative and positive, on brain function and behavior. I will save the uh, negative impacts for a future webinar, however. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, there are various apps, video games, and other online tools that may benefit brain health. In fact, older adults who learn to search the internet show significant increases in neural activities while engaging in stimulated online searches. It is also suggested that the certain computer programs as well as video games improve memory, multitasking skills, fluid intelligence, and other types of cognitive abilities. There are even some apps and digital tools that offer mental health interventions, providing self-management, monitoring, skills training, and other interventions that may improve mood and behavior. So in taking advantage of the vast amount of online information and communication platforms that connect people with others, this type of technology helps us to generate, store, and process enormous amount of 
info and to also interact with each other rapidly and more efficiently. To this end, older adults suffering from cognitive decline could use the internet to, and I'm sure many of you know, access info to help them remain independent longer. Other benefits to searching the internet involves text reading, decision-making, and complex reasoning. In addition, internet searching serves as a form of brain neural exercise. Beware, however, of repetition. Too much can lead to robotic acts that don't require thinking. In this case, spending extensive or excessive time with digital media translates to less communication face-to-face, -face, which is the preferable method of interaction for most older adults, especially me. Very good. Um, another question has come in talking about the fear factor. Um, how can older adults overcome the fear and or resistance of using computers or other technologies? Well, besides, uh, for visibility, hearing loss, and other physical limitations, older adults often struggle with reduced reactivity or reaction time, making it harder to keep up with the fast pace of technology. And sometimes with certain physical or health conditions, even reading can become difficult and more challenging, especially in regard to interpreting and comprehending text. Older adults are also lacking in knowledge about technology, which is a very important factor that may stop them from participating in communication technology. For example, 77% report that they require assistance in learning to use a smartphone or tablet. And of those who use the internet, many also report that they require help with connecting with uh, friends and family. So missing out on opportunities for communication can lead, as I said before, to feelings of loneliness as well as feeling disconnected. So again, this brings up the point that having regular contact with a circle of close friends or family helps to alleviate feelings of loneliness, which is in fact, has been proven to be bad for our health. health. Bottom line, mastering new technology is often very complicated for adults because many of us do not have a baseline or a starting point for using technology. We did not grow up with technology like younger generations. And like many people in general, we have a problem with dealing with change. So to overcome these feelings of fear in using technology, what we need to do is to let them know that they need to put their fears aside and to just simply jump in to learning it and make it a point that when you're helping them, make sure that you reassure them that you are there to help them, mainly because in learning any skill, practice, practice, practice is extremely important. So for example, if they have trouble reading what is on the screen, show them how or let them know that they have the ability to make the font bigger. Even brightness can be adjusted so that they don't have to wear glasses. And if they're having hearing problems, they can adjust the volume. To further assure them, remind them that if they get lost and need help, they can get support at the push of a button. For example, there's an iPhone feature that, and I didn't even know this, that can allow them to quickly access the um, excess information during a medical emergency, even when their phone is locked. And uh, according to ARP, they claim that technology is a key factor in making it possible for older adults to remain self-reliant in their own homes longer, which in itself is a great motivational factor to entice them to just jump in to learning technology and forgetting their fears. And I'm not such a good person to <laughs> do this because I'm still afraid of technology in certain areas, especially when it comes to something new. But anyway, there's platforms like Skype and Zoom, and these are great outlets for older adults. 
as well as a great resource for medical consults. And to this end, video conferencing calls seem to be becoming more and more used and popular, especially since the pandemic. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much, Dr. Calhoun and Dr. Lee. We do appreciate your taking the time and, and educating. Thank you for all the work you have done in this field and continue to do. Uh, as far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can go to our website, knowledgeableaging.com. You can see all of our upcoming and archived webinars. Uh, we encourage you to go to YouTube, type in Knowledgeable Aging and subscribe. We update that a couple times per week. Um, if podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Apple Tunes, Spotify, etc. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar. This is Knowledgeable Aging. <laughs>